I had a place at Cranwell, but unfortunately, uh, I found I was too small to be a strike pilot. I had to be at least five foot ten, which I'm not. Um, so I decided instead, I didn't want to be a bomber pilot. Um, I decided instead I'd, I'd go and do mathematics at Imperial College. It's Imperial. Um, Abdul Salam um, w was um, awarded his Nobel Prize for the Omega Minus Particle when I was a student, and, and that was very bracing. And I realised that intellectually I could go further. So I went back to Nottingham, first of all on an MSc, and, and then started doing my, my PhD. And it's while I was doing that, um, I'd hoped to stay in a lectureship at Nottingham, but nothing was offered. So I, I, I went and got a, a, a senior research post at Loughborough University, where I did some work on my first algorithm uh, on, in, in control theory. Following on from that, I, I was very happy to go back to Nottingham uh, as an, an assistant lecturer. At the same time, um, I discovered from talking with Eric Foxley, the director of the Computing Centre, that there were, there were people in the university looking for methods to help their research. Many of the people in science and engineering had got stuck on fundamental equations in mathematics, which they couldn't exactly solve. But of course, what numerical algorithms gave them was an ability to solve them numerically and get very close to the exact solution they would have got if they could have solved the mathematics uh, uh, directly. Um, and, and the upshot from that was I put together for Eric, while I was doing the teaching of the quantum mechanics, um, a, an, an algorithms library for the KDF-9. Um, and, and, and that was very successful. Um, and I had a, an advisory desk um, uh, doing that um, every Tuesday. Um, and and on, on my second time of doing that, um, a, a senior lecturer from the physics department came up and said to me, you're a bloody liar. Uh, I said, pardon? I said, you're a bloody liar. You say in this paper that you can solve the algebraic eigenvalue problem. But von Neumann in this book says it'll never be solved. What's it about? So I said, well, I said, well there's a matrix. There are the eigenvalues. There are the eigenvectors. And his, his face lit up. And he said, I want to come back and, and, and show you some data. Um, his name was Mansfield. Um, and he was doing research in, in, in MRI. Um, and cut a, a, a long story short, um, in 2003, it may have been two, I think it's three, he got a Nobel Prize for the, um, the, the body scanner. So it, it struck me, instead of perhaps trying to do do quantum mechanics at the highest level um, and my supervisor said look brian if you carry on this is george hall if you if you carry on as you are you'll do some good work i don't believe you'll ever do any great work um but you'll have your own department because you're that sort of person um and, and i thought about it and I'd been doing this work in algorithms. And I thought, well, this is perhaps the best thing I can do, helping other people. It is by So I went around the departments of science and engineering at Nottingham, talking to the um, people there ab about what algorithms they needed because of the problems they'd got. Um, and, and that was the beginnings of the library for the KDF-9. We then got news ab about the likely arrival of, of a, a 1906A at Nottingham, which is a great fillet for the university. Um, showed how broad and strong the computing interest was there. Um, and um, 
and Eric Foxley again from the computing center said, now Brian, you'll have to do as a library. And I said, oh, Eric, that's boring. You've done that once already. He said, no, the, 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 there's, there's a need. And in February um, 1970, um, I was, was lying in bed in my, in my village of Bunny, just outside Nottingham. And it, it crossed my mind that the people I'd visited in Manchester, Leeds, Oxford, and the SRC laboratory, they were all going to get the same machine. They were all getting six A's. We could do it together. What's more, um, Joan in Manchester was ordering differential equations. Sh Shirley in Leeds was a nonlinear optimization. Linda in, in Oxford uh, uh, under Fox, the close uh, friend of, of Wilkinson's, two of the world's greatest numerical al algebras. Um, uh, and the people at uh, the, the, the lab, um, later on Birmingham joined as well. Um, and we, we could cover a library. I, I was doing the random numbers and the eigenvalue problem. Um, and, 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 and so um, I, I suggested to each of them that we had a meeting in Nottingham under the chairmanship of Eric Foxley so that I could actually um, be, be, be guiding the meeting all the way through um, to start a collaborative activity in a, building a library which would have every algorithm selected because of its fundamental properties f as, as described by experts in that area. Um, but, but also we would then document them all very carefully so that the, the, the whole algorithm set would fit together. Um, and that, that we would also have a small example program which they'd put in the user documentation because every routine would need to be in, in, individually documented. But also there'd need to be a test suite for the whole library to make sure it hung together. Um, and a fundamental part of this was um, how we named the routines in, into the different numerical areas from the modified shared classification index that, that, um, that had, had been defined. Um, and, and we went from there. And the Computer Board for University and Research Councils um, agreed to help us uh, with that funding. Um, and um, Nottingham agreed initially to provide us with accommodation. Um, and uh, th that ran increasingly for uh, three years. But but at the end of that time, we, we had 10 of us actually working on, on the project. And at that point, Nottingham decided that we're taking up too much computing resource. Um, and I was advised by um, the uh, the dean of science that um, if 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 I went back to to maths and gave up that st the stupid dag thing, they, it, it would make sure that my career wasn't ruined, which was very very pleasing. Um, but it was clear to me already by then that what we were doing was very worthwhile. So I asked for permission. To, to remove NAG from Nottingham if I could find somewhere else to go. The night th that I got that news, I was a bit depressed. But the phone rang. And the pho first phone call was from Oxford to say that if we would like to, we could move there. Um, I, I was absolutely staggered when the phone rang again an hour later and it was from Cambridge, offering us the chance to go there. And this just underlined that what we were doing was really worthwhile. I decided that we should go to Oxford because Linda Hayes was one of the people making major 
contribution to the library. Fox, who was the head of uh, computing uh, uh, and, and professor of numerical analysis in, in Oxford, w was a world authority in what we were seeking to do, and a very close friend of Jim Wilkinson. And so we decided to move to Oxford. We'd been the Nottingham Algorithms Group, which had been a, a, a crown given us by the, the other members of the founding group. Um, it was clear that was inappropriate, but fortunately it, we'd already become known as NAG and we were able to become the Numerical Algorithms Group. The founding members were Joan Walsh, who was a, a reader in numerical analysis at Manchester and an expert on ordinary and partial differential equations. There was Shirley Lill, who was nonlinear optimization at Leeds. There was Linda Hayes, who, who was solution of linear equations and other areas of linear algebra in, in Oxford. Joined by um, a person from Birmingham University uh, who, who was uh, an expert on special functions a, a li little later. And, and that was the, the core intellectual group around which the whole activity developed. The library was initially used by the six A's, but the, the other universities w want, wanted similar libraries on their machines as well. Um, and, and so um, it was important that, that some of the universities had byte machines, um, others had bit machines, different word lengths, um, and so the, the algorithms had to be scalable uh, across those different environments. Also, it was, it was important also that the software we developed was inc increasingly something we understood to be portable software that, w that was absolutely crucial, because this meant then we could serve um, virtually the whole university uh, community I in the UK. However, it also meant that we could help people in, in industry um, and in government laboratories. Um, th and, and very quickly, we, we were being asked for copies of the library to be leased to them uh, f for their work. And also people from those other organizations were actually working with us to create the library. And so from the, the small group of six that we started from, we very quickly had tens and, and then literally hundreds of international experts helping us. It became clear that, that we needed a structure that would leave us with the flexibility that, that people from all sorts of other institutions, industry, government, could, could associate with. Uh, uh, and, but there was no profit being taken but by the, the, the developers, uh, we, we were all just volunteers. And, and, and that, that, that remained the case. Although ultimately, obviously, my, my salary was paid, for, I'm glad to say. So we, we went for a not-for-profit company, limited by guarantee, associated with, but not part of, the University of Oxford. One wanted to make it worldwide, ideally. But unfortunately, we got caught up in the Cold War. W one of the things that happened w was I, I was offered a Royal Society uh, professorship uh, to go for three weeks to Academica or Novosibirsk in Siberia. Um, when I arrived there, um, they asked for the copy of the library I'd brought with me, and I hadn't. So they sent me to Coventry. And so uh, for, for two days on that massive research site, nobody spoke to me at all. Um, and that's the most frightening experience I've ever had in my life. Jim Wilkinson had advised me to take something in my back pocket so that um, if, if there were a problem, which happens sometimes with the Soviets, I had a way out of it. I'd found, looking at it, there was a mistake um, on their Bessem 6 machine, on the arithmetic. The, the way they did the arithmetic meant they, they were 
the, the, the rounding mechanism they had was far too coarse. They simply cut the, the last uh, d digit off when it was brought to a, a decimal representation. Um, and this meant that, for example, the reason um, they were unable to, to connect up with their satellites in space in the way they wanted to, they were unable to do it simply because by then the, the mistakes of measurement of distance were, were out by about 200 meters. And, and I explained this to them. And of course, they said initially, rubbish, great Soviet machine, perfect, no, no way. But, but fortunately, there were brighter heads amongst them. And two of them said, you know, he has a real point. And they looked at it and found it had, it, it got ground. Um, so they started talking to me again. Um, but the other thing was that they, they were actually grateful for what I'd found. And they gave me a small award for it as well. But, but also from that, I determined that um, any worldwide, you know, hopes were unrealistic. There was that the software we had developed with and the library at this point was so powerful um, that, that it could be used for very destructive purposes. Um, and we, were make, we, we had to make a decision. Um, uh, uh, early in 1971, Jim Wilkinson had taken me with him to the, to the States uh, to meet with the people he was working with there in Ogden National Laboratory and, and also, frankly, the weapons labs. Um, and um, I realised that um, if if we had to make a decision, because of the collaboration we already had f for uh, that point, um, seven or eight years, no, six or seven years, uh, w with the Americans, that that was natural growth for us, a natural point of act, of connection, and it was important we continued with it, and and so um, I, I continued regular visits to Argon. Uh, and, and later to, to other labs in, in the States. Um, also, frankly, um, um, I found doing a month, a year consulting at Sandia Livermore, I, I earned as much as I did in six months as an Oxford professor, and frankly, it helped the family. Digital had developed an, a new machine, of the VAX 11780, and we were asked to be one of the first implementers on that machine uh, and to make sure we got a copy of the library on it because they wanted to get to the scientific community uh, in, um, in the States. So um, in a write-up, I, I described the machine as a new machine, as an implementer's dream. Uh, and, and that led to um, the, uh, the, 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 the photographs you can see, and going over to the States and, and treated very kindly by them. And ultimately, there was a, 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 a big in, international uh, users meeting organized by uh, Digital um, in, in um, San Francisco. Um, and in, in, in one of the great hotels there, um, I, I'd just b been downstairs to, to the basement almost uh, to, to see off um, a distinguished uh, American visitor and, and got into the lift. Um, and, and the lift went up to the third floor and, and the door opened and, and in got Sammy Davis Jr. Um, we then went up to the, the sixth level, which is the level at which the, the people at, attending the meeting were, and the door opened um, and uh, in got 
uh, three people, four people. So making up the six in the left. Um, and the person standing opposite Sammy Davis Jr. Um, turned to me and said, aren't you Brian Ford? Um, and I was absolutely flabbergasted. Um, uh, and we, we went up to the ninth or tenth floor where they got out and the door closed um, and I'm left in the lift with Sammy Davis Jr. And he says, ain't fame great? We had to have quality in every aspect of what we did. So it wasn't just a selection of the algorithms. It was the coding of them the testing of them, the documenting of them, and and the easy avail availability of them. Um, and and we, we, we had to create an environment which had all of those things. The, the, the crux part of it was having scalable algorithms that could go onto all sorts of machines uh, and portable software so the software could, could readily be moved everywhere. Collaboration is absolutely crucial. Uh, as, as I've explained, there are, there are many numerical areas that we were seeking to cover. Uh, we wanted uh, world authorities in all of those, advising us about the algorithms. But other people coming along as they newly entered the field with, with, with good ideas as well. And we made sure we've got we got an environment in, which was welcoming, and 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 and, and people brought material forward, um, uh, and um, clearly, um, gender has n no relevance in that question, but neither does nationality or or, or race, um, and we're, we're delighted to have people from all over the world working with us. The proudest achievement for me um, is that NAG still exists today, that it still has a place in the world. Um, I, I no longer have a, a, a direct influence in, in running NAG. Um, I'm, I'm the uh, sort of worn out heap um, representing the, the beginning. Um, but the fact that the Nag Lyra is still being used, the, f the fact that there has been this profound uh, series of developments throughout different aspects of, of society and industry and, and uh, intellectual life um, it is, is just a, a, a real pleasure. I've been very fortunate. I've worked with literally thousands of people in the end um, and and we did we did build something from that meeting on the 13th of May 1970 which has been of real value uh, to the community and I'm just glad to have been able to make the suggestion that that led to a, 